Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at encrypting in Rails 7. There's a couple of cool things that came out with it, I just never got around to covering it. Uh, one of the uh, niceties with encryption in Rails 7 is the ability to also encrypt your action text. So we're going to be taking a look at this. As a bonus, this is the first video on the channel that's actually been powered by Bard instead of ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT for 20 bucks a month right now is basically unusable. Uh, and for some reason, Bard is just picking up all the slack. It actually did a fantastic job helping me out with this uh, by Googling things. I was too lazy to do so. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Now, in terms of what we actually have to do, it's pretty easy. Uh, we just create a new Rails project. And with, I think, like three lines of code, you'll have something encrypted. Uh, and with like five or six, you'll have something that's like action text and encrypted. So it's not terribly difficult. Uh, it is just a little bit interesting to get set up. So to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and do a Rails G scaffold for a post, give the post a title. We're gonna go ahead and run that. Now we're also going to do a Rails G action underscore text colon install command to quickly install action text. Uh, after that, we need to do our DB migrate, right? And then we can do a code dot to open this up in VS code. And hopefully, if we do that correctly, we should then be good to move this over here and hit Control B. Okay, so what we wanna do now that we have that set up, we're gonna come into our app, our models, our post.rb. Now we gave the post a title. Let's go ahead and let's do a uh, encrypts the title. Uh, and we don't need to do the content. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S. Come over to localhost port 3000 slash post, new post, do a test for the post. Let me hit enter here a couple times, click create post, and now we'll get our first error. Now this tells us that it is at least trying to encrypt, which is good, but it's telling us we don't have the key derivation salt. So how do we get that? Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. All I have to do is do a Rails, and we are looking for a, uh, where is it? A Rails DB colon encryption colon init command. Go ahead and run that. It'll tell us to add this to our credentials. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Now, just as a note, you can create multiple credential files for like development, production, etc. If you're dealing with encryption, you definitely don't wanna use the same uh, credentials for all three. So make sure you set that up. In my case, I'm just gonna run with the default command, which is gonna be an editor equals, and then we can press the up arrow key right here. So we're gonna use editor equals quote, code to space dot, space dash dash wait to open this up in VS Code, and then we'll use Rails credentials colon edit ahead and run this. It should open it up over here. Uh, there we go. So now we have this open. We can paste in what it told us to in the uh, console. Make sure you don't like, you know, put this in a video, whatever your encryption information is, uh, or, you know, upload this to your GitHub or something. Uh, in the case of your encrypted credentials, you're probably okay, but it's better safe than sorry uh, because your config, uh, and after I closed that window, it did uh, encrypt and save the file. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the config uh, is set to use this master key. So as long as your master key doesn't go up, it, it should be fine. And in this case, the master key is grayed out in VS Code because our git ignore right here is already set up to ignore the master key for uh, decrypting credentials. So just make sure that's in your git ignore. Don't push it up. If you accidentally like add it to your git history or anything like that, make sure you clean that up. Uh, nuke it from orbit if you have to and create a new master key if you have to as well. Just you know, be very, very careful because you are handling sensitive information if you're encrypting stuff probably. Anyways, now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S again. We'll go ahead and we'll refresh. And now you can already see we have our stuff encrypted. How do we know? Well, if we come up here and I'll hit F11, oops, not F11 on that. I didn't want to blind myself. Uh, if we hit F11 on that, we can see we insert into posts a title and it created that and an updated that. And if we look right here, our title, if I zoom out a bit, our title, after the comma is set to whatever this nonsense is. So this giant block right here is probably the word test or whatever I typed. Now, why is this important? Well, because if you're looking in the database, let's say someone that you work with accidentally put your database password in plain text and the server gets compromised or something, someone gets access to the database with the password. Uh, they can go into the database and they see the pass or the, the title's content is uh, whatever this is. This doesn't help them because it's also encrypted at the application level. So like, let's say for example, you were to go into a Rails uh, DB console and you wanted to 
you got in here, let's pretend this is your super secret production database, right? And you do something like select star from posts. And you do that and you see, well, it has an ID of one. Uh, and then it has whatever this is. And then it has a timestamp, which is the created at, and a timestamp, which is the updated at, which you can usually infer, I guess. Uh, but this right here really isn't going to do you any favors. That said, if you're in the regular old Rails console and you do a post equals post dot first, and then you do a post dot title, you can see you can read it just fine because it's coming back from the database with that encrypted garbage. And then it's getting decrypted back to whatever you had here using the keys you put into your encrypted credentials, which is really nice. So ideally what you would do is you would encrypt this, put it in your database. And then if you needed to, your database could also encrypt whatever's in here so that you can't just access it uh, and you know, you get the idea. But okay, that's how we can encrypt just something very basic. It's just the encrypts keyword and you put those three keys into your uh, encrypted credentials. Now, if we wanna do action text, let's go ahead and let's set it up first. So let's say this has uh, rich text for the, let's do content. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. We're then gonna come into our controllers, our post controller at the bottom here after the title, we'll do a colon content. We can then come up to our views, our posts and our form. And in our post form here, I'm just going to paste the word content real quick. We can come down here, we can paste this in, we can cut the content, paste it in here and here to change both of these. And then this needs to be a rich text area, just like that. I'm going to grab content again. We can save our form because now we have to come into our post partial. And in our post partial, what we want to do, uh, and I'll just paste this right here, we want to grab the post title and we want to put the post content right there. So now we have action text set up. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S real quick. We can come over to post slash one, click edit this post. We can you know, type whatever we want to. Uh, let's actually make it readable so that we can uh, hopefully see what we typed. And then we'll add a random attachment uh, in my downloads folder. I don't know, let's grab, uh, we'll grab this one again, I guess. Uh, so here's the plan, there is no plan. We'll click update post. So now that we have that, this will not be encrypted. So we could you know, theoretically pop in and, and see uh, the words hello world if we wanted to. So let's let's test that. Let's do a Rails DB console. Uh, and in here, if we do like a dot tables, we can see action text, rich text, I think. And if we do uh, select star from whatever this is, uh, let me grab this. If we do this, uh, we can see ID of one content, which is the thing we called it strong uh, hello world right here. Uh, so that's obviously not ideal, right? So how do we how do we fix this? Well, um, what we can do is we can encrypt this. All we have to do is come over to our post uh, model and in our post model after the body we pass in uh, or after the content we pass in encrypted true. So now let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S. We can come up here and refresh. And here's where you can run into an issue. So in this case, what you have is you have unencrypted data along with your encrypted data. So there is a way around this in here somewhere, uh, which is adding support for unencrypted data. So to ease migrations of unencrypted data, the library includes the option config.activerecord.encryption.support unencrypted data when set to true. Uh, this is for trying to read attributes, they're not encrypted, uh, and it's for uh, querying, etc. Now, this is meant to be used during transition periods while clear data and encrypted data must coexist. Both are set to default by false, uh, which is the recommended goal for any application. So effectively what's happening here, you can think of it like if you, if you were rolling out Facebook Messenger encrypted uh, messaging like they had forever ago, right? assuming you're going to be encrypting all messages what you might do is you might say all right uh moving forward we're going to have both encrypted and unencrypted data in two years we are discontinuing uh the history the chat history that you have in messenger uh from that point forward all messages will be encrypted so you'll no longer have access to your old data for example so you don't want to use this long term, but if you are adding a feature like this, what you can do is come into your config in your environments, your development.rb, wherever you want to put it. Uh, you just put the config.activerecord.encryption.support encrypted data, set this equal to true. Uh, and then you maybe add like a to do or something, Let's say to do, uh, remove this line when uh, you are done migrating uh, to encrypted data only, right? 
something like this. Go ahead and save that. Come over here, run a Rails S again, over here and refresh the page. And now you can see we're loading this up just fine. If we again come into our DB console though, you'll notice if we select star from action text, we can see this, this uh, content right here with the hello world. So it's not encrypted yet, but let's say we edit this post. Oops, well, let's uh, start our server and say we edit this post, right? We can hopefully refresh, click edit this post, come in here, hello world. Uh, uh, I, I can't be read now or something. Oops, I didn't mean to hit control S. Uh, we'll click update post. We can stop our server now. Uh, and if we actually, uh, if we come into our Rails DB console again, we can do a select star from action text. And you can see now one content and we have this P whatever again, where this is no longer readable. So this is now uh, confirmed to be uh, encrypted, right? We can stop the server though, run a Rails uh, C. And in our Rails C, we can do a, uh, you know, at post equals post dot first, at post dot content dot body dot two plain text. And that will give us hello world, I can't be read now, etc. because this is with the, the unsplash image attached. Uh, because this is in the application layer, so this is uh, being, you know, decrypted for us. But in the actual database, it's still encrypted as you would expect. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for now. Uh, hopefully this was interesting and helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.